Richard Dawkins, in answering a difficult question from an audience member, employed a subtle circular argument. See if you can catch it. Okay, uh, so the question's about the nature of scientific evidence. Um, you, you both said, and I think most people here would agree with you, that we're justified in holding belief if there's evidence for it or if there are logical arguments we can find that support it. Uh, but it seems like this in itself is a belief which would require some form of evidence. And so if so, I'm wondering what you think would count as evidence in favour of that and if not, how do we justify choosing that heuristic without appealing to the same standard that we're trying to justify? So how, how do we justify, um, as it were, faith that, that, that science will give us the truth? Is that the place? How do we justify scientific method? Yes. Basically, um, what he said. It works. It, it, it works. Um, planes fly, cars drive, mm. computers can compute. It's an inductive argument. Um, <laughs> um, if, if, you, if you base medicine on, on science, you cure people. If you base the design of planes on science, they fly. Um, if you base the design of rockets on science, they reach the moon. It works, bitches. <laughs> If you haven't caught it yet, here's a hint. Pay close attention to what the other man on stage says. Cars drive, mm. computers com compute. It's an inductive argument. Um, <laughs> um. The questioner asks Richard Dawkins, how is it that he can justify the scientific method? And Dawkins' reply is essentially that science has worked repeatedly in the past and therefore it will work repeatedly in the future. This is what is called an inductive argument. Induction is the process with which one reasons about the unobserved world from the observed world. In other words, induction takes facts and patterns that we have shown to be the case in the past and then reasons that these patterns will continue to be the case in the future. So Dawkins takes his knowledge of the observed world, that science has continuously worked in the past to learn about and describe the natural world, to conclude something about the unobserved world, that science will continue to work in learning about and describing the natural world. At first, this may seem like a perfectly reasonable response, but science itself uses induction to describe the natural world. To do science, one must take into account facts and patterns we see in the observed world, and then one must take these facts and patterns to reason about what the unobserved world will be like. Newton's laws of motion, Einstein's theory of general relativity, Darwin's theory of natural selection, Boyle's gas law, Maxwell's equations, and everything else in science is predicated on the assumption that the future will behave just like the past has. Science is predicated upon what David Hume has called the principle of the uniformity of nature. This is the axiom that holds that the future will behave just like the past has. That the operations that govern nature today were the same operations that governed nature in the past and the same operations that will govern nature in the future. Nature and its operations are uniform throughout all of time. Newton could not have written the Principia if he thought that the laws of nature were in fact not laws at all. If he thought that the universe was a stochastic system, how could he come up with laws to describe it and then use those descriptions to make predictions about its future states? The uniformity of nature is the axiom with which science is predicated upon. To sum up, Richard Dawkins uses induction to justify an inductive form of knowledge. This is inherently circular, because Richard Dawkins is assuming the validity of the very thing he is trying to justify. The dialogue that just took place here could be summed up like this. The questioner asks, how can you justify induction? Dawkins replies with, through induction, of course. I can also put Dawkins' argument in the form of a deductive syllogism to make the circularity even more clear. Premise 1. If induction has repeatedly worked to explain the natural world in the past, then induction makes it reasonable to believe that induction will continue to work to explain the natural world in the future. Premise 2. Induction has repeatedly worked to explain the natural world in the past. Conclusion? Therefore, induction makes it reasonable to believe that induction will continue to work to explain the natural world in the future. This argument is in the form of a modus ponens argument. Premise 1. If P, then Q. Premise 2. P. Conclusion. Therefore, Q. This is a deductively valid argument, meaning that its formal structure is correct, in so that if the premises are true, and there are no informal fallacies contained within the premises themselves, then the conclusion must necessarily follow from the premises. However, this argument commits the fallacy of begging the question, also known as circular reasoning. As is blatant, the argument assumes the validity of induction in order to justify induction. Thus, the argument is not deductively sound, meaning that there is a flaw in the premises. It's circular. Bitches. Much of the time, I feel like that we eat up the words of people like Richard Dawkins without much thought or skepticism. It is important to note that Dawkins is a fallible person. Dawkins is not, to my knowledge, trained in the philosophy of science at all. Then again, neither am I, but I'm basically infallible anyway, so uh, I'm really not, but if I made any errors in my reasoning here, feel free to drop a comment uh, correcting me, of course. 
Anyway, that's all for today. So if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and subscribe for more content. Thanks.